question directly to me, and I'm not sure I fully understand your question. So um, I'll just uh, maybe like touch on what you were talking about: fully automated uh, communism and you know the support for nuclear. I mean, clearly nuclear is not a renewable source of energy, but actually. I think there is more reflection to do around even renewable energy and building wind power. Does we need a lot of steel, transportation, a lot of energy to build them and maintain them. So I think that one of the issues that is not really debated is you know the uh, idea of degrowth, because unfortunately, the way of life that is known in the global north is not something we're going to be able to sustain and we're gonna have to you know do with less and that probably be fine when some countries will need to have more so you know I'm just uh, I don't have a solution on that but certainly not nuclear so the question that was there about um I, th I think it was a question about whether we had, uh, whether Extinction Rebellion had planned uh, plans for strategic actions fighting the potential or, or current or potential legis legislations around climate change and what we're doing. Um, I was just going to mention a couple of things. One is um, the ecocide law, which has been the bit we've had action supporting um, in the summer uprising outside the courts, courts of justice in London. That was a very strong topic um, that was brought. In fact, the boat was named after Polly Higgins, who wrote and, and sadly isn't with us anymore uh, the ecocide law. And also during the winter, uh, the October rebellion that's just happened, um, there was a lot of focus. In fact, I think the best of the of, of our focus was on government offices, what a government doing on various things. But I think we've avoided talking about Brexit because it's just a minefield. Uh, so, and I was going to say about in, in response to the sort of nuclear um, thing, and it was just an observation really that um, Extinction Rebellion is specifically not about solutions. And it's made me think that what what is useful about the organization not being about solutions is that it's about the willpower, it's about government change, or, or a people change, I would say, as well. Um, we've got a world of fantastic solutions, and we've got a world of, 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 of debate about solutions, but it's not for the movement of Extinction Rebellion to solve those. And I think there's something useful about that, in that we've built something very big. How long do I have? Uh, <laughs> a couple of minutes. Yeah. I'm going to um, draw some experiences from my personal life uh, in the past. So, well, my first uh, encounter with Extinction Rebellion, I went to this meeting before the first strike, and they gave us, like, it was like a PowerPoint, and we, they talked about like the science first, and then they talked about what we're going to do about it. And so the people in Cambridge who started up Extinction Rebellion, one of them is actually like a physicist. And so he like, was able to explain like, feedback loops and all that like, complex science and how we don't really know what's going to happen. And so when you uh, look, listen to like, what Greta Thunberg says and what like, many like, people at the top of Extinction Rebellion say, they're clearly intelligent people. They, they know what they're doing. They know what they're talking about. And I think, um, but I think most of what, just because that's what's been in, like, in Cambridge doesn't mean it's been the whole of Extinction Rebellion. And I think most of what Extinction Rebellion has been is like, here's the question. And not so much as uh, what 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 is that actually under, underlining problem here? Uh, so I think um, as I touched in my speech earlier early on, I was going to try and add, had a bit more have a bit more information, uh, have touched a bit more on this in my speech, but time gap, time caps. So in the past, we had a lot of like of our movements hitting mainstream media and on the television and on the like big newspapers like the BBC, The Guardian, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But what I say now is, why try to aim for that now? I mean, especially like these days, people are, try, are moving away from actually moving a bit of away from the tele the traditional television and the BBC. Like we now have the internet age, as cringy as that sounds, and we actually have a way of uh, making our own information, making our own. Uh, sources for people to understand what's going on. We don't, of course we do, of course it is important to make sure that these big lying corporations are held to account but I think if they're not gonna like, listen to us then we just make people listen to us ourselves. 
Uh, so uh, social media is a very important aspect there. So nuclear power, uh, I think um, I did, uh, on the, in the March strike, I had a speech about nuclear power and I said how like, you know, um, it's just as bad as coal and gas, uh, not just, but it is really terribly bad, almost as bad. And if we use nuclear power, we will end up in the same position we are in now, when we're running out of uranium and plutonium, and like the world is getting irradiated, and you cannot touch things because you will die. And the, I think um, my physicist teacher, as much as I disagreed with him on nuclear power, he did have one good point, which was that people don't really understand the science around this. And they just hear radiation, they're like, oh, hmm. So I think we, we need to make sure people actually understand what's going on here again with nuclear power. We need to actually like, build up a mass media on social media and also just talking to people. And we need to make sure it becomes normalized in our own communities rather than these mainstream outlets. And how do, uh, how do teachers get involved in politics? That's a good question. So uh, my English teacher, she was at my old school, she was uh, very supportive of youth strikes uh, to the point that she would say, are you guys going to the next strike? <laughs> so uh, I think um, when, uh, depending on like the subject you do, they can you can like educate your the your students in that ex aspect. Like uh, if you're an English teacher, you can give them poems about relationship with the uh, human human humanity and nature, or and nuclear power, etc. etc. If you're a maths teacher, you can use examples of like uh, radiation half lives, and you can use like the damaging environment, environmental impacts if you're a science teacher, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I will finish off, there we go. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, in Edinburgh, uh, the council is so, so great that they actually passed a climate emergency and said, we agree. And then their policy to school students was they can have one day a year to strike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought, so anyway, the school students completely ignored that, and it was 10 to 20,000 out in the street of Edinburgh. So that uh, made a nonsense of that kind of motion. But the other thing that has to happen is that teachers shouldn't be looking to see themselves as teachers. They should see themselves as activists. The best thing you could do is go along to a stu school student um, this, uh, uh, strike on the 26th and actually participate, support, help, megaphone, leaflet, do whatever. Don't dominate it, let people fight, um, but nevertheless do that. I'll tell you what, you might see five or six people for your school, and they'll recognize sir, teacher, boss, whatever they saw you as, actually as, a, as, as them. To be honest, I think you also need to go to the NUT or whatever the union is, and fight to make the, the, the trade union uh, policy to give you strength to support you as a teacher and as a trade union member that you can actually be a climate uh, rep in your school so that you can ha then have the solidarity of your, of your fellow teachers. Uh, and I think that it's, it's coming from that angle uh, is the best, the best thing uh, that can happen, that we can do that. <laughs>